Dear listeners, now to complete our ratio analysis. And if you do remember, we did finalize the first two categories, and now we are going to start with the third one, which is long-term debt paying ability, which reflects the source of funding our own assets, our own investments. Uh, the first uh, one of them is going to be liabilities, and the second one is going to be equity. So to reflect the ratios related to measuring these relations, we are going through two sides. First, the source itself, which means liabilities or equity, and then the second, which is going to be uh, the derivative that will come out of it, which is uh, the interest. So we will start with number one, which is times interest earned. And uh, this uh, interest must be uh, paid for having the debt, which means a financing uh, uh, privilege. So this means uh, that earnings before interest and taxes is going to be used, which means before paying any interest divided by the interest expense itself. And of course, both of them will be available to your income statement. Number two is going to be cash basis as of times interest earned. And of course, this is the same as the first one, but we are to uh, include uh, the non-cash item, which is the depreciation. So it will be earnings before interest and tax, plus the depreciation expense, and the total will be divided by interest expense. And then we are going to the source, and the first uh, source is going to be liabilities. So total liabilities, which means total debt, uh, will be divided uh, to total assets. And of course, uh, when we look to the first and second ratio, uh, greater is better, higher is uh, very good. But uh, when we go to number three, which is debt ratio, uh, it's not to increase uh, or to be over than 50%, which means a half of the asset. That's related to the regular type of business, a normal way. But in some cases, it would be other than that, according to the given criteria. And then to go to number four, which is debt to equity ratio, which means the uh, dividing of total debt, total liabilities to equity. And uh, this means that uh, debt should not be greater than equity in normal cases. Uh, but uh, as we said, in other cases, it could happen. And then to number five, which means debt to tangible net worth. And this means we are to um, exclude the part intangible assets from the equation by dividing total liabilities over total stockholders equity uh, deducted from the, lib the uh, sorry, the shareholders equity, the intangible assets. And then for the last one, which is fixed asset equity, equity ratio, this means uh, we are going to divide fixed assets over or uh, sorry by the shareholders equity uh, and then we will go to the profitability ratios profitability ratios means uh, the ability of management to achieve profits uh, through using the given assets or the uh, investments available uh, we will uh, go for a one main criteria that greater is better which means uh, a higher level of profitability is better than otherwise so the first one is going to be net profit margin, which is net income divided by net sales. Both of them will be available uh, in our income statement. And then the second is going to be total assets turnover, which means net sales divided by total assets. And of course, net sales will be available uh, or illustrated in our income statement and total assets will be to the balance sheet. And then uh, the one famous return on assets, which is going to be uh, ROA as an abbreviation and this means net income divided by total assets net income from income statement and total assets from balance sheet and then operating income margin which means operating income divided by net sales both will be available in our income statement and then the famous roi return on investment which uh, is going to be ebit net income plus interest plus tax divided by the long-term liabilities and total equity and uh, the last one is going to be return on equity, which is very famous as uh, ROE, return on equity. And this means net income divided by uh, total equity. Uh, after this, we are going to the last group of uh, subcategories related to our goals as of 
uh, any type of business, which means for the investor, how, how to attract the investor to invest. And this will start with earnings per common share, which is very famous as EPS. Uh, as earnings uh, goes for net income minus preferred dividends, uh, divided by the number of common shares outstanding, of course. Uh, and uh, some people will like it uh, as of high and others don't like it as of high according to the needs of uh, keeping reserves. And for number two, prices divided by earnings ratio, which means the price of our uh, share in the market divided by the earnings ratio, which was number one. And this means market price per share divided by the earnings per share. Uh, and this reflects the payback period as of uh, the investor will think about um, when he pays some uh, money as of the price related to the uh, share he's going to uh, ask for and then he's going to get earnings each and every uh, fiscal period so this will reflect his own payback period and then goes to number three which is a percentage of accumulated retained earnings and this is going to be retained earnings uh, divided by net income and retained earnings here is uh, from the balance sheet which is the accumulated amount under uh, equity section uh, and this reflects the accumulation level related to management decisions and policies and then we are going to the percentage of retained earnings with a, a, which means we are going to use the retained earnings uh, related to the uh, fiscal year only and this is going to be as of net income minus all dividends divided by net income. As of net income uh, minus all dividends will refer to the part that's going to be retained. For number five, dividends payout, which means dividends per common share divided by earnings per common share. And this part goes for the measuring of the portion of current earnings per common share being paid out as of dividends. And then dividends yield, which means to indicate the relation between the dividends per common share and the market price. And this is going to be dividends per common share divided by market price per share. And the last and famous one, the book value per common share, which means the common equity divided by the number of common shares outstanding. And the common equity in this case um, uh, is going to be all equity uh, and uh, we are going to deduct from it the preference part or the preference, preference section. After this, uh, you can see that we have an example which is solved. So you can sir, try to apply all the uh, ratios we've gone through and uh, try to find your answers and then uh, try to make a comparison with the given ones and if you have any problem try to correct it and find uh, the cause of it and uh, please find the right answers.
One of the most important parts related to uh, analysis or financial analysis is to make sure uh, about the going concern of your own uh, company or uh, if you are an investor, you need to make sure about that part and uh, that there is no problem with liquidation or no problem with bankruptcy. So to use uh, that score model for that purpose, uh, we are going to apply uh, five uh, parts uh, related to one main equation. These parts are going to be added together after calculated. And the first one is going to be working capital divided by total assets. Uh, and this uh, part is going to be multiplied uh, by a, a factor that we are going to design later after calculating each and every part out of these five parts. The second one is retained earnings divided by total assets. And uh, the third one is going to be EPIT or earnings before interest and taxes divided by total assets too. And then the fourth one is going to be market value of equity divided by book value of total liabilities. And the last section is going to be sales divided by total assets. Every one of these five is going to be referred to as of T, from T1 to T5. And uh, to calculate number four, especially, which is market value of equity, uh, you can see that the market value of equity means the number of common shares outstanding multiplied by the uh, share market price. Uh, of course, um, if we can have a market price related to the preference part, we can calculate it too. But it's not that easy to find that part and it's not revealed and it's not easy to reach. So you can um, make sure that you can use only the part that's related to uh, common shares. Uh, then, and here we have our own criteria uh, to complete the analysis uh, by comparing the result that's uh, calculated from the next coming slide directly to these three levels. If we are below than 1.23, we are the distress level. If we are in between 1.23 and 2.9, this means we are at the gray zone. And if we are greater than 2.9, uh, our company is safe. Uh, of course, safe means um, liquidity or liquidation, sorry, is not um, a topic right now. And we have uh, no problems with a bankruptcy situation and uh, we are good to go we are going concern with no problems we are going to apply uh, the equation which means uh, multiplying t1 uh, as of the first part of our equation of the five parts uh, to the factor uh, 0.717 and then t2 to the factor 0.847 and then the third one, which is T3, to 3.107. And then uh, T4 to 0 0.420. And then T5 to 0 0.998. Uh, and when we do that, we are going to get the summation. And when we get the summation, we can make our own um, uh, decision according to uh, the given criteria. And here we have a solved case that you can try to solve it uh, on your own and then to compare your own results with the given answers. And the finally, one of the main or most important statements uh, for the analysis, which is the cash flow statement. And the, the one main important uh, ratio to give 
uh, an insight about the quality of income is going to be the cash flow from operations, which we can go for CFO as an abbreviation divided by net income. And also we can exclude the uh, part related to the uh, non-cash items by adding depreciation to net income as shown. And we can use the next six ratios uh, to apply the analysis related to the cash flow statement as provided. The first one is going to be CFO divided by average dividends paid. And of course, the dividends must be paid, and we can find these dividends from the cash flow statement itself. And then the CFO again divided by the average total debt, and the total debt is going to be provided from the balance sheet. And then we can go to the uh, interest coverage ratio, which is going to be CFO plus interest paid and taxes paid, and both of interest and taxes paid can be provided from the cash flow statement itself divided by the cash interest payment. Because the interest which is available in the income statement may not be paid according to accrual basis. Very good. And then we went, uh, we are going, sorry, we are going to the cash capital acquisition ratio, which means the retained CFO divided by acquisitions. And acquisitions will be available in the second section of the cash flow statement, which is the uh, investment part related to the outflows. And uh, next, we are going for the cash flow per share, which means CFO divided by the number of common shares uh, issued if there is no availability for the outstanding. If there is an availability for the outstanding, it's better to be used. And then um, the one that is next is cash flow return on equity, which means CFO. And we are going to uh, deduct the preferred dividends paid uh, divided by the Average common stockholders equity, which means the amount of uh, common equity and uh, not the number of shares. And uh, at last, we are going to the cash flow return on total assets, which means uh, CFO plus interest plus taxes divided by average assets. Uh, of course, next we are going to have uh, some given cases that some of them um, solve it and some others are not solved. And for the solved ones, you can try to apply the ratios given and try to find your answers. And then you can make a comparison uh, in between your answers and the given ones and try to find if there is a problem and solve it. Thank you.